We have this evening Jody Kilbasa. I'm just delighted that he's been able to take time out of his schedule. And let me tell you, the man is working two jobs, not just one job. So he had to take time out of two schedules, evidently, to uh, find uh, his way here so he could be with you this evening to chat with you about two things. He's certainly going to talk to you about being vice provost for the arts. That is the position that he holds along with being the director of the Virginia Film Festival. So I have uh, put an article about Jody from the UVA today, which you can certainly find if you're going to need more details or want more details. He's actually there talking about his new duties and roles. So if he doesn't talk about them to your satisfaction tonight um, or this afternoon, you can certainly go to this article and you can find more of the details. And you just click on this, and it's really pretty, pretty informative. So I'm going to turn this over to Jody. And he's going to chat with you and um, share with you his life story. And as I said in the email I sent you all, he does have stories to tell. So Jody, thank you. Let's give a round of applause for being thank here. Thank, thank you, everyone. It's always a pleasure for me to come over to Brown College and, and talk every year um, and, and get to know some of you and share with you a little bit about the arts at the University of Virginia and the Virginia Film Festival. I want to start out with a two-minute uh, Virginia Film Festival highlight reel uh, to give you a sense of the size, the scope, and the reach of the Virginia Film Festival. And I encourage all of you to take advantage of it. It is four days, November 6th through the ninth, and um, how many of you are familiar with Arts Dollars? Have you heard about Arts Dollars? Oh wow, that's dismal. That's very, very bad. Um, um, then we're not getting the word out properly. I'm, I'm not faulting anybody here in the room. Um, one of the great benefits of being a student here at the University of Virginia is that you can attend almost all arts events for free. Um, and the Virginia Film Festival is a world-class film festival that brings in major stars every year, uh, incredible guest artists, talented filmmakers, and some of the top films. Many case, in many cases, you will be able to see uh, some of the top films that will be released later in the schedule that are vying for Academy Awards and Golden Globes months or weeks before they're going to go into general release. Um, the artists that we bring in every year are remarkable. So for instance, last year we opened up with the film Nebraska, nearly two months before it was to screen nationwide. And we brought in the producer, Ron Yerksa, who's a Virginia Film Festival Advisory Board member, but also we brought in Will Forte from Saturday Night Live, who was absolutely phenomenal. Um, uh, he, he gave about a 30 minute, 40 minute Q&A after the film. Um, uh, in front of over a thousand people at the Paramount Theater, including students. Uh, he, then he went to our opening night gala and actually shut that down around 1.15 in the morning, talking to 12 of our student interns, and then proceeded to go out on the corner and party until goodness knows what hour. Um, I, I saw him the next morning at the bed and breakfast. He got up and asked me where was a good place to run. I sent him down Park Avenue and McIntyre and around the grounds of the university. And then later that evening, just for fun, we screened MacGruber with Yorma Tacone. Uh, I don't know if you know Yorma, but on Saturday Night Live, he's the guy that for years did those short films. And the two of them um, uh, spoke for about an hour after that film and then continued out in the lobby, continuing to interact with students and then went out again on the corner until all, all hours of the evening. So there's a lot of great opportunities to interact with our guests and our filmmakers. Most of them really enjoy coming here to work with the students. In fact, that's one of the things that distinguishes the Virginia Film Festival because we are really the only major film festival that is presented by a major research institution here in the United States. So that distinguishes us. And the level of engagement and discourse that the festival provides. Uh, for example, two years ago we launched a presidency in film series with the Miller Center here at the University of Virginia, which if you're not aware of it, is one of the top presidential think tanks in the country. Former governor of Virginia, Governor Gerald Belisles, runs the Miller Center, and we wanted to launch a film series that focuses on the role of the presidency as it's portrayed in film. And we thought we would launch the series with the, with the um, uh, screening of All the President's Men, marking the 40th anniversary of Watergate, and we brought in Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward and had a moderated conversation after that screening on the stage. The remarkable thing about this is that these are gentlemen who shaped the course of our country's history. 
uh, during Watergate. They discovered that scandal. They reported on it. Uh, one of the gentlemen won a, 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 a Pulitzer Prize for writing about it. Uh, remarkable coverage, and it changed much of the course of our country's history on how we perceive the uh, presidency and how we move forward. So this is a really extraordinary opportunity to bring people that actually can provide living history to our students and to our community. Another example of this is a couple years back, we screened Freedom Riders, marking the 50th anniversary of the historic Freedom Riders and the director, Stanley Nelson, brought in three of the original Freedom Riders who were on the bus as it went into Alabama and Mississippi and um, it was stopped by Molotov cocktails and they were beaten and they shared that, that story with the students. And these are people that experience that. So they bring a whole different level of experience and personal history to the table, which is extraordinary. And on top of that, we bring in some pretty big movie stars and pretty famous directors from time to time, which is also very fun. So I want to share with you a two-minute video right now, and then I'll get back to you after that's done. Great. And this will share with you the history of the festival as well. This is the 27th year of the festival. It actually originally was founded by Governor Gerald Belisles um, years ago to promote filmmaking in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, you want to hit that switch, the first one closest to you, put all the lights down. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Later Breaking Bad, discovered at the Virginia Film Festival. Yes, that's a new one, yes. So, so, um, so hey, it looks fun, right? And it's free, and you can go. And it's not hard to go because um, it takes place on the grounds here at the University of Virginia in Newcomb Theater and in Culberth Theater. Um, it also takes place on the downtown mall, which is really not that far, everyone. It's like a 15 minute, maybe 20 minute walk. You can handle it. Or, and there's a free trolley to get down there. And I hear all the time students, oh, that downtown mall is so far away. It's not. You can get there, particularly if you're going to go see Will Forte or Oliver Stone or some of the people that we tend to bring in. It's really 
really worthwhile. Um, um, I, I do want to explain arts dollars to you because it's really, really important to, I think, your, your, your time here at the University of Virginia. I know that when I went to college years ago, um, uh, I, I took this as an opportunity to really branch out and see a lot of things that I did not have the luxury to be exposed to on a regular basis when I was a kid growing up. And so it was an incredible opportunity for me to take advantage of arts, arts events, to go to the symphony, to go to lectures. And it's tough when you're a student. You have studies, you've got your social life, there's athletics, there's all sorts of stuff going on. But try, try to make these things. Try and move around the grounds of the university in various disciplines. Expose yourself to the arts. It's so important, not only to your personal growth, but later on down the road. It really, really is. If you've never been to a symphony before, we have a great symphony here at the University of Virginia. We have two museums. They're phenomenal. Uh, we have tremendous lecturers coming in all the time. Um, in Three and a half weeks, I just had a big meeting today about I'm bringing Kevin Spacey in to address the university about the arts, and it's at John Paul Jones Arena. Um, we're pretty much sold out. There may be one more release of tickets, but that's a free event uh, to listen to Kevin Spacey speak about the arts. He's brilliant. Um, uh, we launched this new series about the arts with Tina Fey last year in the amphitheater, and we had nearly 6,000 students and faculty and community members out there. It got so big that we had to move it to JPJ. We went through 8,000 tickets in 48 hours. Um, so if you still can get a ticket, go. It's going to be a great event. We're, we're throwing a spotlight on the arts here at UVA. We do a lot of things like that during the year that are truly extraordinary opportunities, and I encourage you to take advantage of them. And once again, they're free. So there's really no reason other than you just, you know, finding time in your schedule to do that. I'm. I want to mention that you find the arts dollars by going to UVA arts, the website. That's correct. Yes, you can. Yes. Um, and please spread the word to your fellow students because it's remarkable how we'll discover somebody who's been here at the university for three years and for some reason they haven't stumbled upon arts dollars. And they're always happy when they do, so it's a good thing. Um, I'm very fortunate because I consider myself to have one of the best jobs here at the University of Virginia. Um, for three and a half years, I was the director of the Virginia Film Festival, and then I was appointed vice provost for the arts. So I represent all of the arts at the university, um, um, uh, all around the ground. So I think in my portfolio, I have both the museums, the Freyland Museum. If you haven't been there yet, it's an incredible museum. And uh, Final Fridays actually launches this evening. It's fun. They they have drinks and food down there, and it's free, and great art, and they're launching a Gordon Parks exhibit tonight, which is an extraordinary uh, exhibit, so I encourage you to go down there. The Kluge Roo is off the grounds, but it's the finest and most important collection of aboriginal art in the United States, and that's housed over on Pan Tops. It's a little bit of a drive, but I hope you'll find your way at some point during your time here at the University of Virginia. We have the Charlottesville Symphony at the University of Virginia, which is composed of um, of faculty and students that play. They actually open their 40th season this evening and will play again on Sunday and they'll present several uh, concerts as well. We have a professional theater company in the Heritage that presents during the summer. Great events in drama, great events over at the Ruffin Gallery, um, and, and on and on and on. Uh, the music alone here at the university is just astounding and endless. Uh, <laughs> But more than anything, I'm here today to talk about the Virginia Film Festival. So this event is coming up November 6th through the 9th. As you saw, it's a pretty large and comprehensive event that will take place in four days. We'll screen about 120 <coughs> films in those four days. So it's an aggressive schedule. I've known students to go to a dozen films during that time. Um, we, uh, most of them are scheduled, obviously, on the first two days um, uh, from 5 o'clock on, but on the weekend we go from 9 o'clock in the morning until midnight and beyond. Um, so the opportunities are endless and extraordinary. I have been doing this, this will be my sixth Virginia Film Festival, but for the, before that I ran the Sarasota Film Festival, founded it and turned it into one of the largest in the southeast of the United States uh, before I was, being, uh, was hired to come here to UVA. And from my experience, what I can share with you is this is going to be the largest assembly of talent at this year's festival that we have ever had by far. 
Um, and it's a really interesting process because we're still finalizing films. In fact, about an hour before we came here, I finalized um, a, a, a very important film that I saw at the Telluride Festival about a month ago, uh, which is going to be front and center in the award season. The actress this year will be nominated for Best Actress and will likely win it. Um, I cannot yet share with you what it is. We announce our program on October 7th. Um, but what I can share with you right now is we will have two Academy Award winning directors that have both won the Academy Award but have been also nominated multiple times that will be here to present films during the festival. I can share with you we will have an icon of both film and theater that will be here during the festival. We will have many independent film directors, some of which you've never heard of and others which you may have caught wind of uh, if you're interested in, in film as well. Um, uh, we have another icon from a 70s hit cult movie that will be here during the festival. Um, we have a prominent UVA alum, Katie Couric, that I can share with you, who has a new documentary out called Fed Up about the rising obesity in our country, uh, country uh, school children. And uh, she's very passionate about this subject, she, so she will be here to talk about that subject with the film, which is always great when we can bring a UVA alum in, uh, particularly somebody like Katie, who's internationally renowned as a journalist and now moving her passions into film and into health as well. Um, so, you know, really kind of an extraordinary four days that I, I hope you'll take advantage of. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the process for me, uh, because I get asked this question a lot. So um, the festival is a four-day festival. It finishes after the first weekend in November. Um, and it takes about a month to wrap things up. Um, we have to send films back. We have press. We have to thank sponsors. We have a lot of cleanup in terms of the venues and everything like that. Um, we head into the, the Christmas season. We rest a little bit. And then in January, I go to the Sundance Film Festival. Um, in Utah, in Park City, Utah, uh, which is one of the most prominent film festivals in the United States and arguably the world. It is a film market, essentially, founded by Robert Redford, but every year they screen about 150 plus films, and a lot of the distributors come there to bid on films. Um, a lot of major talent comes in, and everybody's probably saying, wow, that sounds sexy and very glamorous, um, um, which on a certain level it is. But let me tell you, most of my Sundance film festivals that I go to are anything but. I average seeing about five films a day. Um, um, if you're not familiar with Park City, it's actually where they hold the Winter Olympic tryouts. So when I was there last year, um, they were having the half pipe right up uh, uh, above me. And at one point after being in the theater for like 10 hours, I was sick of it. I just needed a break and there's the, the Olympic uh, tryouts happening and I trudged up the mountain, which was really only about a 15 minute walk. And it was like an Olympic village up there and they were doing the half pipe and it was extraordinary. Um, but in reality, most of the time, you're walking in snow up to here and there's a snowstorm blowing in your face and you're getting onto trolleys in gigantic Michelin tire suits because it's freezing. One year I was there presenting a film and it was three below. Um, um, and they don't care who you are. I actually went back uh, in 2007 and I was a co-producer on a film called The Deal that starred Meg Ryan and William H. Macy and LL Cool J and Jason Ritter and Elliot Gould. And they could care less. I barely got two tickets to my own screening. Um, and, and I did get into my own after party afterwards with all the stars. But I mean, really, they just, it's not like a big deal when you're out there. So it's, it's, it's strangely enough, it's a lot of work. And while I'm out there, I'm looking at films and scouting films, essentially, for the Virginia Film Festival. So I'm trying to see as many films as I possibly can within a day. I'm also networking with producers, distributors, um, uh, introducing myself to directors saying, hey, you know, we'd love to screen your film at the Virginia Film Festival, and that sort of thing. And so generally, I'm there for about eight days doing that. Um, I come back and I meet with staff. Um, uh, the festival now has a full-time programmer as well as my role has expanded as Vice Provost of the Arts. He comes out there with me, we start to talk about shaping the program, and then we go during the course of the year to a number of other film festivals. So there's the AFI Documentary Festival in Washington, D.C., there's the Full Frame Doc Festival, which is presented by Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. We go to River Run. Um, this year, I decided to go to Telluride, um, and then in this cycle, 
right as we approach the fall. There's a num number of very, very important film festivals that define the fall season that informs the award races for the Academy Awards and the Golden Globes. And those include the Venice Film Festival in Venice, and one of these days I'm gonna make myself, I'm gonna go out there. Um, um, there is the Telluride Film Festival, which I did go to this year, and that's extraordinary. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with film history, but at one point they had a panel there that included um, Ethan Hawke, Werner Herzog, Wim Wenders, Francis Ford Coppola, um, uh, Mike Lee, the British film director, and I think two other major uh, directors who have had extraordinary impact on, on um, the history of cinema, uh, talking, and it was free and open to the public. I mean, it's an extraordinary film festival. I saw Reese Witherspoon in Wild. Um, um, I saw Hilary Swank in a new film that Tommy Lee Jones has directed. Um, uh, I, unfortunately, I missed John Stewart with his new film, Roseland. Uh, just extraordinary films that are going on, and, and that helps inform our program at the last minute, because that's over Labor Day weekend. And then this year, I could not travel to the Toronto Film Festival, which is the world's largest film festival, and they screen over 400 titles in about 12 days. And I've been there many times before, couldn't go there this year. And and that's another extraordinary festival where I try and see four, five, six films in a day. Um, and a lot of those films leave Toronto and they come out looking for air, trying to figure out where they're going to land for the fall season. Because what they're all doing is they're jockeying for a position, the distributors and the filmmakers and the companies that have made these films and or the independent filmmakers for the award season. Because the award season can extend their life, give them marketing boost, and help them sell later on down the road. And so we are part of that festival cycle being in November, and so we're going after a lot of those what I would call anchor films in the festival, films that in the past several years have been the artist, which won the Academy Award, um, but played here at the Virginia Film Festival a month and a half before it had a national release, or The Descendants with George Clooney, or Black Swan, um, uh, which was just a remarkable film and, and very controversial years ago, or last year, August Osage County and uh, Nebraska and Mandela, uh, we had Silver Linings Playbook um, about a month and a half before its national release as well. So these are opportunities for us to sort of lay an anchor up for the festival. But the real heart and soul of the festival are the independent films and the extraordinary documentaries that, that we screen. And they provide an incredible platform for me to engage in dialogue across the grounds of the university. So we might screen a documentary that deals with health, as in Fed Up, um, or uh, that might deal with Alzheimer's, as in a beautiful doc that we had um, a year ago, or a lovely documentary several years ago called Monica and David that um, dealt with a young couple that both had um, Down syndrome and uh, in their 20s decided they wanted to get married and the challenges that presented for them both personally and for their families who were largely caregivers for, for, for these young people. Um, and working with the Ark of the Piedmont locally to uh, sort of create awareness for this. Uh, we'll deal with films that deal with alcohol and drug abuse and we try and engage people that deal with these issues as well to once again create a platform for these very difficult issues. Um, we've, we've worked with the astronomy department before when we screened a film about astronauts. Uh, there's so many touch points across the grounds of the university and the extraordinary thing is the university has some of the most renowned experts in the world on so many subjects that I have this great luxury when I screen a film that I can just send an email across the grounds and say, Professor, would you mind introducing this film and then participating in a panel with the filmmaker and possibly bringing in some other people as well to discuss the subject behind the film. And that's what distinguishes this film festival at the University of Virginia from the other 1,500 or so film festivals across the United States and, and in North America because we have this, this relationship in our part of the university. And it really is just a great opportunity. And I might add, um, and with all due respect to some of my colleagues, that it's actually kind of fun to go see a film and they then hear a 30-minute panel that kind of drills down uh, deep and down and dirty, dirty into a subject instead of hearing a, a, a more formal lecture from time to time. It's a very accessible way to sort of touch base on a subject. Um, but again, some of our films are just fun. 
Um, you saw Matthew Broderick up on the screen earlier. My first year here, uh, we screened Wonderful World, and it was the closing night film, and it was a new film that starred Matthew Broderick in it. It was also the 10th year anniversary of Election, uh, the film that he did with Reese Witherspoon, and the producer of the film, Ron Yerksa, is on our advisory board, and I asked Ron to come in and to bring Matthew, and we screened Election um, on a Sunday afternoon as a matinee, and then we closed with a Wonderful World, but we could only fit 500 people, and of course all the students couldn't get in to see that. So in the amphitheater, almost at the same time, a little later, we screened Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And, <laughs> and um, uh, the amphitheater was packed with students. And after Matthew finished his Q&A on the stage of a, the official closing night film, we rushed him over to the amphitheater, and just as the credits were coming up on the screen, Matthew Broadwick. Um, you know, Ferris uh, came out center stage and the, the students just erupted. They went nuts. And, and actually, I was a little nervous, actually. They rushed the stage and the cell phones whipped out and they're taking pictures and, 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 and he was overwhelmed for a second and then he ended up taking Q&A from the audience for about 25 or 30 minutes, which was a lot of fun. So there are all these fun opportunities, too, which are an important part of the, of the festival. So, uh, yes, Steve. Make sure you talk a little bit about your background. Okay, okay, yeah. Sh sure. Um, so Steve's asking me how I got here today, and it's a circuitous route, but um, uh, I got a BA in history at Rollins College, and while I was there, I, I, I dabbled in theater a little bit and found that I liked it a great deal and decided I wanted to pursue that. So then I got a, um, a BFA in theater at Florida State University. I spent a little time in London. Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. And um, then got my MFA from the Florida State University Oslo Conservatory for Actors Training, which was a two-year MFA program in which the second year you receive your professional actor's equity card, um, making me eligible to go act professionally on the stage. Um, I chose not to go to New York. Instead, I went to Los Angeles, largely because I couldn't sing and dance. Um, I was on a soap opera briefly, waited a lot of tables, and had the bright idea that I would open up my own uh, theater space so I could produce myself, people would see me, and I would become a star. Um, after a while, I quickly realized I was running a mom and pop business, um, uh, but learning how to produce, which I loved, and working with artists and engaging artists and allowing them to sort of realize their dream. And I found out that a lot of artists were so incredibly talented, but when they got out in the business world, did not have a clue how to pull it together, how to produce themselves, how to engage an audience with their art, how to make money. And that was something that I found out that I really enjoyed connecting these people and, and sort of bringing a creative team together to produce something and then actually have it be successful for them. And so I started to build my abilities and skills and expertise doing that. Um, I did that for seven years. I'm very proud that that theater actually revitalized a historic block in old Hollywood right under the Hollywood sign. It was only 92 seats. Over the years, it had a lot of incredible people go through, including Warren Beatty and Annette Bening, including um, President Reagan and Nancy Reagan, Kevin Costner, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers used to hang out there all the time. <laughs> Madonna used to hang out on the block. It was really cool, and it was a very dynamic period in my life where I got to work as an artist and as a creative and sort of really um, learn skills that have informed my career down the road. I chose to move back to Florida after the Rodney King riots and after the Northridge earthquake, which sort of dev devastated that area and made the economy very tough, and uh, became a producing artistic director of American Stage, which I did for two years when I was hired away to start the Sarasota Film Festival from scratch, which is very interesting because I had a board of directors, community members who wanted a film festival of import in this community, and they started me off with $1,000, no, uh, no, no um, computer, no stationery, no office, nothing, and I had to build it from scratch. And when I left after 10 years, it was a $2.25 million organization. I had a full-time staff of nine. We screened 226 films. My last year there, the governor presented the award to Charlize Theron. Um, um, and the, at the big uh, gala event, and we had Stan 
Stanley Tucci and Steve Buscemi in there, um, Florian Henkel von Donnersmark, who had won the Academy Award for Best Foreign Director that year, and um, uh, Bill Macy had opened the festival that year. Liev Ullman had been there at the festival that, that same year. It was an extraordinary thing. Um, we produced large events where Aerosmith played our rap party and the B-52 played, B-52s played our rap party there um, uh, of Montreal, um, the Brazilian girls. Um, I mean, just, just amazing events, and it was extraordinary. Um, but then I was fortunate to find my personal calling by landing here at the University of Virginia, where I could wed a lot of the things that I learned when I was actually uh, an undergrad studying history and create events wrapped around the Miller Center and the Center for Politics that sort of is a reflection of my personal love for, for politics and political science and for history, all wrapped into film. Um, and take that one step further because my background and training was as a professional actor and now I get to represent all the arts at the university for which I have a profound love. So for me, I've come full circle, which is a great and extraordinary privilege and I get to all the time use all of these skills and go to special events and work with people that are absolutely extraordinary and it's become a real passion and love for me. Um, but it was a real circuitous way to get there. Yes. Okay. Now, you also have interns in the film office. We do. And I want to talk a little bit about the opportunities, and then I'm going to wrap up and, and yeah, open for questions. Too, you know, yes, that's, that's right. So, so reveal, right? Um, each year, we work with 12 student interns. It's a three-credit hour course. I also used to teach in arts administration with George Sampson. Um, and as a result of that, it takes you soup to nuts on how an arts organization, a nonprofit arts organization works. And it's really remarkable because they're assigned various areas in, in the festival, whether it's publicity, working with the director, um, marketing, uh, development, uh, production. Um, they're assigned these, but they all come together to make sure that this event happens. And I just mentioned to you that I'm still confirming films. I announced the program. Um, a week from Tuesday on October 7th, and up until October 3rd, we will be finalizing the programming, adding talent, adding directors, um, adding discussants. So these interns actually experience it in real time. They're given assignments which they have complete ownership of, and it's really extraordinary. Uh, the other thing that we do during the festival, which you may or may not want to participate in, is the Adrenaline Film Project. It's a 72-hour filmmaking competition in which students and community members write, produce, edit, direct, and star in their or cast their own films, which are then presented in competition format uh, in a screening on Saturday evening during the festival. And it's a remarkable thing. This is the 11th year that it's gone on, and we have about 14 teams that compete against each other for prizes and recognition and the right to screen at the festival. There so that's a Brown College team. There could be a Brown College team. You're absolutely right. So, so I'm going to leave you with, because I know Steve has a teaser here to, for participation for Brown College during the festival, but please take advantage of the Virginia Film Festival. We announced the evening of October 7th, and at 7 o'clock, these films will become accessible. You can get them. Here's the one thing I'm going to ask all of you, and this is really important to me. Um, don't abuse the arts dollars. They're really, really important. If you get a ticket to a film, and you last minute go, ah, I'm going to go to the fraternity party, or I'm going to do something else, you keep somebody else out, either another student or another person, because we reserve that seat for you. And as a result of that, I cannot tell you the number of times I've told filmmakers coming in, or even stars coming in, we're sold out, we've been sold out for two weeks, and then I go in and there's 20 seats open. So if you're not gonna use the ticket, turn it back into the office, um, but we want you there. That's one of the reasons why we do the Virginia Film Festival, and that's why we do the arts at UVA. So participate in it, take advantage of it, and thank you all. Do you want to? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, please. And I yeah. have a question that will work out perfectly, and I apologize for my phone going off. It's one of those things. You know, the phone needs a reminder, or you need a reminder to turn your phone. Okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> what we just want to do this evening is let you know the film that Jody and his staff identified for us, we have previewed. We've agreed that this is the film that we should, as a community, sponsor. And every year, as long as I've been 
as director of studies and even before me, Brown College has participated actively in the film festival. Matter of fact, you know that week we do not have class here. We are going to go to our film, which is. <coughs> some of the stars, and we will have the music. So we are going to make some beats for sure. Uh, and, that, and that should be really interesting. Uh, could we get the lights again, Sue, or somebody to grab the lights? Because we'd like to have a chance for you all to ask me a few questions. Um, and just stay tuned. We will be filling you in on the day and the time that we will be doing this film. And you will have an opportunity to interact with the principal players once we know who they are and how it's all going to be set up. But this is our film and what we're sponsoring. So we hope you are as excited as we are about this. All right, so questions. We've got time for three, four questions. Yes, go. What's your favorite movie ever? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, 
I, I'm going to give you my default answer, which is really true. My favorite movie of all time is The Wizard of Oz. Oh, yes. um, and, and, and that sounds very simplistic. I'm like, really? I mean, you're directing a film festival? But honestly, I, I believe that it's a perfectly made film, um, not only for its time, but that it's, it, it has lasted and still has an amazing impact and an extraordinary story that lasts today. And, and it's just a beautiful film. Um, but you know, I get asked all the time, and I've been in magazine articles about your top ten and your top five. And there's obvious, you know, films that you can name like The Godfather. Um, uh, there's so many extraordinary films that I can mention. And I, I, I swear you, every time I have to name five to ten films, um, I'll name the list, and somebody will come back three years later, and um, it'll be a different list. Maybe some of them will be repetitive, but not all of them. And, and I think it's just because I love films and it's so hard to narrow it down. But if you had to say, what's your one single one, it's that one. Yes? Okay, so the way that the program is set up um, for, I guess, the Medium Film Festival, mm -hmm. like, you said that there's different genres, mm -hmm. um, like, basically, we're talking about, like, health. Is, is there, like, um, does the program have that all sections so that we can plan it out, like a game plan out of like No, no, you know, we, we don't. I mean, it, it'll be fairly obvious. I mean, you'll understand whether you're seeing a documentary or a, a narrative feature uh, or a short film program, and it'll be very clear with the synopses, you know, what the direction of the film itself is. But, you know, um, uh, if we program against ourselves all the time because it's a wide divergent audience. So it's not a walk in the park. In fact, the, the only criticism, frankly, that I've heard about the Virginia Film Festival the last couple of years is people coming up to me and saying, yeah, it's too much. I wanted to go to this, but then I had to go see this, and then I couldn't get over to that theater. And I make no apologies for that, because we sell out most of the films anyway. And I, I, I want to program to a large audience, and that's what's d dynamic and exciting about a festival. A festival means to celebrate, and we are celebrating the art of filmmaking, and it's a communal celebration. The very act of sitting in a movie theater and watching a film is so different than watching it on your iPhone or on your computer <coughs> screen. And the idea is that you are responding to the people that are around you, and it's a shared experience in that movie theater. And so is the discussion afterwards. It's amazing how these films free people up to talk and engage in a discussion about the subject matter afterwards. So, so no, but you'll figure it out. And, and there, will be, <laughs> there will be classic films. You will see a film that deals like this film, Fed Up, uh, that Katie Kirk's involved. Um, you will see new films, films that are obviously independent films that you might not know nothing about. I, I, I ask you as you sort through the program, there's films that are clear. You have a legendary film director coming in. You want to see this film. But sometimes it's the small independent film that's the real gem. Right? What you need to know is there's a one, they do a wonderful job with the program. So in the program, and when the guy comes out, maybe, what, October 8th? Uh, no, 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 no. We announce online, we have a brand new, awesome website that will launch on October 7th. And I'm so excited about this. It's the far, it's really, really cool website. And we, we're still tweaking it right now, but I've got a great company that came in. Um, it's going to be very friendly to social media. Uh, we're going to be able to download this on, on your iPhone or your 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 smart so that'll be right on the set yeah right right october 7th at seven o'clock it'll be ready to go 7 uh, the pro yeah. 7 p.m 7 p.m, 7 PM. Okay. 7 PM. Um, uh, and then after that uh, uh, around october 30th we will have our festival program that will be in seville and in the daily progress and on the grounds of the university as well right. which is a uh, folding big program right and it's a wonderful chart so it has all the venues and it has all the days and it has all the time so you just right. read right down what's mm -hmm. going on all day long in these different and you just circle where you're going to go here or here or here it makes it really clear what you can do so you will fill it out i am sure you will fill it up we had a question here yes yeah uh how often do you find yourself having a battle between showing like a classic movie or or even an old movie that's been kind of underexposed with a cult classic or picking a new, very exciting movie with a lot of buzz around it. Well, I mean, all the time, because I can share with you right now, we have about uh, um, 10 classic films in the festival with Academy Award directors coming in. And one of them that's coming in, I'm screening the 25th anniversary of a very important film, arguably his best film ever. Um, um, and then I have a new film that he's just directed. 
that stars a major person and there's going to be interest on seeing that. I'm going to screen it anyway, but I'm trying to balance out the venue size and figure out what's going to have a larger audience, where do we want to screen this. I only have him here for less than 48 hours. Uh, and it, oh, by the way, he's up against another Academy Award winning director who we're doing another 25th anniversary screening of a film. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough. It's very, very tough to balance that out. But again, um, there's a lot of great opportunities. You're not going to be able to see everything, but you're going to be able to see some extraordinary things. And I would suggest, you know, let's go see this film because this is a rare opportunity to listen to an Academy Award winning director after that film. And then let's go find two or three new films during the festival. And great foreign films as well. Great, great international cinema during the festival. Yes, question? When, when will tickets be available? Okay. Tickets will be available on October 10th. Okay. Yes. Can you explain in a nutshell how the arts dollars work? Okay. Um, students can just go to the box office, um, down at the arts box office, which is in Cobra Theater on the Betsy and John Castine Arts Grounds. Um, and you can just go in uh, during the, the, the box office hours and request a student ticket, and you will get one student ticket. Um, so that's, that's essentially how it is. So it's fairly straightforward. You can also go on the arts website that Stephen mentioned, and they will have a, a probably much more detailed explanation than I gave you. But it, it's relatively simple. Right. The uh, Film Festival has done a wonderful job. When it all go, comes up online, at least last year, and you saw a film that you wanted to go to, and you buy tickets, you click on it, and it will be use arts dollars. Right. So you just do it electronically. Uh, there's like nothing to it. You get all your films, get all your tickets. The key there, though, is if you decide not to go, just give the ticket yeah. back. Yeah. So that somebody but you can't. You it. cannot print your ticket up in your your dorm room or your residence. Yeah. You but have you to go down and pick it up. Uh, there there are certain films the demand is so great that we will tell people, we'll literally email them on the Friday before the festival begins, you have to pick up your ticket by Tuesday at five o'clock or you will lose it. On that Monday, we email them again and say, you have to pick up your ticket by, by Tuesday at five o'clock. And then Tuesday, we do it one last time. And if you don't do it, you're out of there. And we <laughs> sell that ticket. So it, there's, a, there's a shared responsibility um, as well because we don't want uh, students blowing off these filmmakers in these films. It's really, really important because it keeps other audience members out. So that is, the onus is really on you to, to step forward and make that. And we try and give you three chances um, over a fairly long period of time to do that. Okay, one more question. I think, yes, you're it. Can you expand on the internship that you talked about? On the internship? About? Sure. Uh, I talked about it being a three credit hour course. Um, the course um, requires two papers. One is a simple two, um, two page sort of self assessment. The other is an eight page paper at the end, towards the end of the semester, that really details your experience. And I look at not just your personal experience in the area that you were working in, but how it, that integrated with the rest of the interns and the festival as a holistic experience as you see the festival come together over roughly a 90 day period. Um, you're also assessed on the area that you were working in uh, specifically. It's a great experience because let's say you want to you get some work in production or you want to have experience in marketing or public relations. Um, uh, it's a great thing for that. It's also very good on your resume. We help place students afterwards and really important to internships in the entertainment industry. And it's just a great experience. And the, the, the assessments that we get back from students are remarkable because we give students ownership over projects. Projects. I'm not going to say that you never do not stuff an envelope during your time as an intern there, but really um, the engagement is extraordinary and what we expect out of the students is extraordinary. And frankly, there's a lot of competition to get in to be an intern these days. So you it's only take 12. It's a course. Yeah. You go online, and, and, is it a spring yeah. course? It's a fall course, right? It's a fall course. Fall course. Yeah. Yeah. You don't happen to know the number of the right off hand, do you? Right now? Um, well, just uh, it's, it's drama, 4250, uh, sorry, yeah. the drama course went out of my head. It's a All drama right. it's, a it's an independent study. So as you're planning the next year in the spring, find that course and, or come to us and we'll make sure you find it, okay? Don't forget about it, but it's for the fall. All right, look, let's give a round of applause.